Thank you for your time this afternoon. I know you're incredibly busy. Um, this has been a budget that's been described to me as half-assed and that it's really like there's nothing surprising, nothing exciting, nothing shocking in the budget. We've been asked to, to focus a little bit on the impact on women and so mm. we've come to you basically with that in mind. Mm. Well, there's certainly some very shocking things in the budget from my point of view because this is not a fair budget particularly for women. When you do things like put a flat tax on people, that is the increase in the Medicare rebate is 0.5% uh, in addition on anyone's income. Well, that means that high income earners are saying paying the high proportion, the same proportion as low income earners, when in fact low income earners uh, should have progressive taxation. So what that means is that uh, women who uh, earn less than men uh, will uh, statistically, in terms of the proportion of them, are uh, unfairly burdened by things like the increase in the Medicare um, tax. At the same time, we've got a government that's giving a massive tax cut to big corporations. Mm. We often hear about mums and dads. I mean, it's one of the particular phrases you get from politicians all the time. This is a mums and dads issue and all this kind yeah. of stuff. Have the mums and dads, and the mums in particular, been forgotten in this budget? Yeah, well, I certainly think they have. When you, we do have a government that has its priorities wrong, you know, they've made some very unfair uh, accusations against uh, the Labor Party. For example, uh, we've been accused of not properly funding the NDIS. Well, the simple fact is we had properly costed and funded the NDIS. What we weren't doing it was slugging Australians with a 0.5% Medicare increase. We didn't need to do that because we weren't handing a big tax cut over to corporations. Mm. So when you look at mum and dad issues, yes, plenty of people have children with disability and they want to be reassured that those things are paid for, but it shouldn't be coming out of their own pay packets uh, in terms of a flat tax in terms of the Medicare rebate. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just go back to, to the impact on women and talk about higher education for a minute because yes. there, there is uh, you know, more than half the students enrolled are women, the young women. That's What's right. happening there? Well, so what the government's proposing to do is to reduce the HECS repayment threshold from 56 down to $42,000. Now, that's a pretty low income uh, and uh, women graduates overall, they're more likely to be in insecure or part-time work. Certainly $42,000 means you may not even be enrolled, you may not even be working in the field in which you've graduated uh, in, before you're paying back your hex. So really that's going to force more young women and single parents uh, into poverty. Mm. Housing affordability was the other big thing. And again, like, there's nothing here in the budget that made me go, oh, fantastic, or oh, yes. that's horrible. You know, it was almost like, really? Custard. Mm. But housing affordability has been something that they've been jumping up and down about. Nothing seems to have happened except mm. uh, perhaps young people being allowed to put a bit of money into their super and then pull it out again. Uh, women impacted at all by those decisions? Yes, look, because, again, because women uh, earn uh, less than men, it means housing affordability is also a bigger problem for them. And you also consider the fact that more women are single parents than men are single parents. There are more women struggling on a single income to uh, buy a house, um, not only for themselves, but also for their children. So when they've put forward policies like um, the, uh, the, the savings measures where you can drop money into your superannuation, they're really not considering the fact that that will still be very difficult for women to do if they're on low incomes. Mm. And what they're not dealing is dealing with the inflationary impacts uh, in the housing market of things like um, the negative gearing tax concessions. Now you really can't deal with housing affordability adequately in this country unless you've got that on the table. And what does the budget say about negative gearing? Just well they haven't done anything about crickets. negative uh, gearing and uh, so there's a long way to go uh, before we're serious in this country about mm. tackling housing mm. affordability. Uh, it, there are, I was just reading um, Shelter WA's uh, press release about the budget and they've said, look, there's some good tinkering around the edges, but you still need to deal with the substantial So it doesn't, it doesn't help homeless women in any way at all? No, and look, uh, women are at high risk of homelessness. It's not the common perception. But if you think about the fact that, uh, you know, people might get divorced in their 50s and the fact that they may have been on in insecure work for much of their life, 
they don't have the saving buffers that others do mm -hmm. and they're likely sometimes to find themselves surprised by the fact that they find themselves uh, homeless. Yeah, there must be, I mean, I, I always have a, a nightmare about being old and homeless myself, but <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, I've, I've bought a house, I'm hoping to be able to deal with that, I'm 60, but you know, yes. it's, for a man of my age to have those yes. kind of dark thoughts, it must be a lot worse for younger women who think they've got 40 years left in the workforce yeah, and they're going to end right. up with Look, nothing. it's quite significant, uh, the number of people that are of retirement age uh, that still have mortgages uh, and again that's because of the very large mortgages that people mm. are paying off. And it's not really being helped at all by this budget is it? The housing bubbles in Sydney and Melbourne are not going to be reduced by any measure in this budget? No, look if you're making it easier for people to save for their first time they're still competing in housing markets mm. that yeah. are overinflated. Can I just finally talk to you a little bit about the politics of this budget mm. now because you're in the Senate and you've mentioned already the zombie measures hanging yes. over from 2014, which yes. they, they, they're hoping that they've maybe buried, cremated uh, yes. them and staked them through the heart with this yeah, particular yes. budget. But they're still going to have to negotiate with you and the Greens and Jackie Lambie and everybody else in the Senate, aren't they? Yes, look, we, we've been quite successful in blocking some of the worst measures of this government. Clearly, we were disappointed by... Um, what the Xenophon group did in backing the big tax cuts for corporations. Mm. Uh, but we've still got a long way to go in terms of fighting things like the fact that retirement age in this government's policy settings is still set at 70 years of age. And I think that that's unacceptable. Yeah, I can't work for another 10 years. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Yeah, that's <laughs> well, look, Louise, good luck with that in the Senate because I think that's really, I mean, you senators are what stands between us and the, and the, the real horrors of this government. Yeah, look, we're not going to let go of any of these issues. We'll be fighting tooth and nail. Thank you very much. Thank you.